Welcome to another episode of The Gatekeeper in collaboration with Josephia International Ministries. Hello Josephia International Ministry listeners to our audio session. This session is entitled A Message to Leaders. I take the study from 2 Chronicles chapter 7. Many of you will be familiar with this chapter, especially verse 14, where it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn to me, then I will hear from heaven. Then you can even read by yourselves, yeah? I will touch a little on the historical background of the nation of Israel. Right after Moses took the Israelite slave out of Egypt, God instituted rules and regulations for right living, healthy lifestyle, and righteous laws. Israel was the only nation set apart from the rest of the warring tribes and warring nations with its unique monotheistic worship, and they had laws that were far superior and fair to its adherents. Israel was meant to be the like of nations and a testimony to a living and loving God. They however failed to live up to their end of the bargain because of their failure to obey the laws of God. Hence from 2 Chronicles onwards, we read of the downfall of the nation until the awaited Messiah arrived on the scene in Bethlehem on what we now call Christmas Day. Jesus is the light of the world and the hope of nations. He is the Prince of Peace and the Lord of the heavenly hosts in the same breath. Every tongue and every nation will one day bow down at his name and testify that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Scripture is going to be broken as written in Revelation chapter 19, verse 16 to 17, Psalms 136, verse 3, Daniel chapter 2, verse 47, Matthew chapter 8, 28, verse 18, Philippians chapter 2, verse 10. Most importantly, in Philippians it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, every knee and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. With these scriptures in mind, let us be very aware and respectful of the word for today. That they will be speaking to leaders of churches, nations and governments. No matter how powerful you are today, whether financially, economically, militarily, technologically, or in your own measure, intellectually superior. All of you must bow at the name of Jesus when he returns to rule this world. To some of you who are atheistic in mind, or perhaps even making a god of yourself, please remember the day of the Lord, or the day of reckoning and accountability, is around the corner. What you need to do today is crucial and can mean an eternal life in the presence of a loving Father in heaven or to, stand, to spend eternity in the lake of fire that is being reserved for the devil and his demons. It really does not matter whether you want to believe in the last day commands as it's written in the Bible, the Word of God, Scriptures already clearly say, Does the clay speak to the potter? Why are you doing this or that? In Isaiah 45 verse 9. <coughs> what I'm sharing was already written in his holy word, and it pays great dividend for those who will listen and obey. We go back to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, especially verse 14. These words were spoken and recorded as prayers made by King Solomon. This prayer was made at the pinnacle of the glory, wealth and power of the nation of Israel. His prayer was for the nation 
you keep their faith in Jehovah, their sovereign Lord, and that they should repent and turn back to Him in time of national disaster, famine, enslavement, or total hopelessness. Right after His death, the nation started to disintegrate in terms of politics, prosperity, unity, and wars were constantly fought. Most of all, there was a national turning away from a holy and righteous God. From history books and confirmed by Bible narratives, we read of how Israel fell from glory to slavery again in just a matter of decades because they turned away from worshipping the one true God. The history of the rise and fall of Israel is a lesson for all national leaders and church leaders to carefully chart their paths. Do you want to be a people pleaser? Do you want to have the popularity votes? Do you want to be compromising for the sake of superficial unity and peace? Until you have the Prince of Peace in your lives, all the peace negotiations that you place on the conference table will do nothing to improve the state of your nation or your church. As you view the ongoing complex issues around the world, pandemic, hunger, war and rumours of war, what is your answer? More round table meetings with world leaders? Have a problem solving seminar among church leaders? The foremost answer must be to turn to the Lord in repentance as in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14. You see now how national leaders are tabling all kinds of humanistic laws and promoting all kinds of people-friendly laws, laws to please the abortionists, LBGT, women's right, right to euthanasia, right to choose my sexual orientation. All this in reality are flavorous and its ultimate result will be more confusion, self-destruction and self-deception upon those who promote these concepts. You see how world leaders are themselves already deceived into believing that what they are doing is actually right when they themselves do not live by the precepts of truth and righteousness. Just like the kings of Israel right after the death of King Solomon. You see and read of current kings and royalties who live tainted and immoral lives. You hear of corruption in the highest offices of nations. You hear of total injustice where the rich and powerful always get away with heinous crimes while the poor men and women on the streets are thrown into prisons for small offending. Some die at the hands of cruel and sadistic officers of the law. Hence you see more criminals existing in all forms, shapes and shades. How are these injustices going to be remedied? More laws to be tabled in Houses of Parliament? More human rights organisations to be established? More police to be employed? The answer is repent. World leaders must repent. Church leaders must repent. You cannot preserve anything if the internal organ is already rotten. You cannot heal anything that is already sick from the, from within. The sickness of the world is sin. Until world leaders and church leaders repent of all their wayward acts, their arrogance and pride, the cycle of world pandemic, economic upheavals, political instabilities, wars and rumors of war will not decrease. A particular word for church leaders is in order at this point. There are many successful church leaders. They are very prominent in the church world. Some of them receive accolade even from political leaders. 
they have what appears to be great in the forefront of ministry, especially in healing and miracles. Their churches become well known around the world. They can boast of many thousands of members and affiliates. They have written numerous books and command great attention as well as have numerous viewers who watch their televised programs and teaching sessions. There's a certain charisma that they carry, a certain kind of aura around them. It is wonderful to be used by God and we praise His name for using His humble servants. I totally believe in the anointing of our dear Holy Spirit upon servants of God, upon lives that are totally committed to His kingdom's cause. I totally believe in the blessings that God will pour out upon His faithful servants and they will be rewarded presently as well as in eternity. However, let us be reminded of Paul's admonition in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. How do we build on the foundation that Jesus laid? Are the work of our hands made of gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, and stubble? Outwardly, many ministries may appear to be successful, but are they truly built using the kind of material that pleases God? There may be some ministries that use a humanistic approach in preaching the gospel to the lost. Others may be using a mixture of paganism mixed with Christian theology. The latter group of leaders and preachers are usually within the charismatic movements, where signs and wonders are the main menu in their ministries. It all appears biblical and doctrinally sound until you listen to the theology behind their messages. To be Christ-centered and Bible-centered, we must always be guided by what Jesus said about the work of our dear Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching. If you found this video useful, please share it. For more updates, please hit the subscribe button and click on the bell for notification.